What's up, Chris? How you doing? Good, man. Good to see you. Um, I kind of wanted to just kind of see what you've what you've seen so far in these running backs. Obviously, it's a different room with with <coughs> excuse me with Kenneth in there. Um, how much is the competition elevated, and and do you have kind of a, a pecking order yet, or will it be kind of juggling right now through the rest of the spring until the fall? Yeah, you know, I think the number one thing that Ken's brought to the room, obviously, is he has brought competition. He's also brought an element of elevating everyone's game, I guess would be a good way to put it. I think everybody noticed right away the guy's got a pretty special skill set, and he's come out and he's really elevated everyone's game. But the competition's been awesome. You know, guys are competing against each other, and I think they are getting better. I think I've seen a substantial improvement from everyone in our room from last year to this year, and obviously having Ken has added to that. And with Elijah in particular, I mean, between the 2019 tape that you saw and what you saw in person in 2020, what do you think was the difference in – and how can he get back to maybe that level he was at two years ago? Yeah, you know, I think obviously last year was a challenging time for a lot of people, you know, different situations. I won't get into too many specifics with him. You know, you can ask him when you speak to him later. But uh, Elijah's a different person this spring. I've seen a totally different kid, uh, different back, and he's really done a really good job. He's always been very, very coachable. Just some things last season maybe weren't as easy as they had been previously, but he's starting to get back to that. Next question is from Matt Wenzel with MLive. William, uh, you, you, you talk about the, the guys you have in your room, and you got five there right now and uh, pending two more to come this summer. Um, with, with seven guys in the room, how are, you, how, is it, how are you able to try and keep everybody happy and engaged when you know there's, there's more bodies than really you can spread out in a typical game rotation? Yeah, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, it is competition. But one thing I am very pleased with with our group, it's it's competition in a healthy way. We're not necessarily competing against each other. We're competing to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And I think as long as you do that, the chips are going to fall how they may. And, and really have been pleased with the way each guy, when a guy comes off the field, the next guy is supporting him, coaching him up on different things, you know. Ultimately, the stuff's going to work itself out, I think, ultimately. But I've been really, really pleased with the guy's effort. <laughs> And for uh, Jordan, as a, as a guy who came in and, and led you guys in rushing as a true freshman, um, kind of a surprise, I guess some people would say, but what have you seen from him this spring trying to build off that when you do have a guy like Connor coming back with all that experience, Elijah being almost a thousand yard rusher in 19, you bring in Ken and all the other guys you've got. Yeah, you know, ultimately, again, incremental improvements, daily improvement. I've seen Jordan get better every single day from day one of spring ball till today. He had his best run, I thought, of the entire spring during one of our low red periods, and he's just continuing to improve. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Our next question is from Lindsey Huddleston. Hey, Coach. Uh, with the Hi. schools that you've been at and experience you've had watching running backs, tight ends, and things like that, particularly for running backs, have you seen any change in trends as it relates to the new running backs coming in or people pretty much li living off the same basic principles, you know, uh, of, of being a running back? Or are you seeing things differently? Yeah, Lindsay, I think the number one thing that I've seen is the move to playing more multiple backs. You don't usually see the one back that plays the whole game like we did years ago back when Jim Brown, which I never really saw, but I've obviously seen the clips of it. But uh, there's just not a lot of 30 to 35 carries. I think, And I think guys understand that. If you look at the NFL, you know, the lifespan for a running back is less in the NFL than probably any other position. And guys realize when they get that opportunity to play at the next level, they want their bodies taken care of. And I think that's why guys are much more open. And you see it at several other schools throughout the country, multiple backs playing because they know it keeps their bodies healthy and keeps them fresh for late in the game to finish. That's probably been the biggest trend I've noticed. Great. And just a quick follow-up. Are these guys picking up on that once they get to the collegiate level or are they coming in from high school understanding that? A lot of that's in the recruiting process, understanding, you know, you look at a lot of programs throughout the country, they're signing two and three backs in a year. You know, you look back to Bama years ago, I think they signed like Alvin Kamara and several other great backs in the same class, maybe Derrick Henry, just kind of works out that way, you know, and guys understand, hey, it's compete to stay, compete to play, and everything's competition in our program, and they understand that. I think as long as you're truthful and you tell them exactly what to expect when they get there, they're not disappointed because they know what to expect. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is uh, from Paul with Spartan Mag. Hey, Will, thanks for taking the time to do this. I just wanted to Thank ask you, you about, uh, you know, your takeaways from some of the scrimmages. What did you see in the, in the scrimmages as far as what guys are doing now that maybe they weren't doing, uh, you know, during the season, whether it's understanding yeah. the playbook or seeing holes that they, weren't, they didn't see before? 
Yeah, I think more than anything, I think you've seen the drill work and things of that nature that we were trying to work and implement in the fall season carry over into practice. I think the pass protection improved drastically. That was something I was really disappointed in last year. You know, ultimately, we didn't play very well last year. I wasn't pleased with the way we played, but I think our guys have kind of put a chip on their shoulder and said, let's go compete our asses off and take this thing to the next level. And one thing that I guess as a follow-up that maybe people don't know about Kenneth Walker is that he can catch the ball out of the backfield a little bit. I know that's something he wants to do a little bit more of. Uh, what have you seen from him in that regard? Yeah, ultimately, what I've seen out of Ken Walker is anytime you put the ball in his hands, you got a chance to hit a home run. And that's what we want to do. We want to put the ball in his hands, whether that be handing it to him, throwing it to him, in any different way we can get it to him because he's a dang good football player. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, I'll go back to Chris, the Detroit Free Press. That, that kind of leads right into my next question. I mean, have you ever seen a, a year, I know it was only seven games, but a season where the running backs didn't hit the end zone at all? And how much do you guys – drill that into them right now I imagine that's that's a big talking point for you guys absolutely you know last year was unique you know but not to make excuses there are no excuses ultimately you're responsible for the product on the field um, but one of the things we've really emphasized this spring is low pad level and finishing runs on the goal line we plan on eliminating any misconceptions that we're not a physical unit next question about to Nate Atkins with the Lansing State Journal yeah, William, I'm just curious just what uh, this spring, having it normal with workouts and practices, um, what this does for you guys just as coaches to kind of understand each other and what Mel's looking for and um, and how beneficial is it to have practices where, you you know, you can kind of see players run through certain things and come back as a staff and discuss it compared to last year when obviously you didn't have any of that. Well, Nate, you know, it's just totally different. I mean, it really, I know I'll keep saying that, but it's just a totally different deal. It feels normal again to a certain extent. Um, Last year, early in, in fall camp, we were on two different fields during practices. We couldn't be on the same field. And, you know, as we've continued to go through this thing, just being able to make improvements, communicate things, I think that's been the biggest piece is the ability to communicate better, you know, being in the same room with each other again and things of that nature. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. well, and just as a quick follow-up, I'm just kind of curious. I mean, you saw him. Mel, last year in these practices, I know he's pretty intense out there, but just what has his kind of energy level and vibe been uh, this spring when you guys have been out there on the field? Yeah, high velocity and nonstop. He always talks about relentless. You know, we're always trying – we really try to preach the finish, and, you know, that's something that we've really tried to do. We're trying to knock the ball out on defense and take care of it on offense, and he's really trying to, you know, pick up the tempo and the way we practice. Last year, we weren't really where we needed to be from a conditioning standpoint to really push the tempo. And I think this year we're able to push the tempo a little bit better in practice and be more consistent and sustain over time. All right, thanks. Thank you. We have time for a couple more. We'll go back to Chris with the free press. Two guys we haven't really talked about. Um, I, I guess first with, uh, with Eaglin, I guess, what have you seen this spring out of him after not getting any reps last year? Any, yep. any case? Yeah, Eaglin's actually, in my opinion, him and Collins are the two most improved backs we've had this spring. I think Eaglin's really taking the next step. Um, last year he wasn't ready, you know, just being transparent, wasn't ready for the playing time that could have possibly been provided. But this year he's really taken advantage of the situations that he's gotten. Um, you know, going back to the scrimmage, I think he had a 23-yard conversion on a third down, just on a check down. He went and just competed and got it done and finished the run and got the first down for us. He's really done a nice job, and he's shown us that he has the ability to help move the sticks in the short yardage situation, apparently. Or yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With Connor in particular, um, you know, he's been a guy that's kind of been used in a lot of different ways. Uh, but I would imagine with, with the changeover and different guys coming in, the young guys, I mean, how much, where, where's his leadership at for you guys in that room right now? Yeah, he's, he's been, you know, I always preach about Connor. He's, he's gone above and beyond since I've been here to do the right things. Uh, he's been a really good leader. He's a guy that can play multiple positions. He's a guy that understands what the receivers are supposed to do and also what the running backs are supposed to do. And just his versatility. And honestly, he's just a really darn good football player. He's probably got the best hands on our offense. And just a guy that I feel like you can plug and play anywhere that can help our team. And he's actually had some explosive runs this spring. You know, I'm sure you probably saw one of the deals that went viral. We had like a 45-yard run in a practice. So he's really done a nice job for us. And since Wenzel decided to, to back out, um, the line in front of those guys, um, how much of it right now are, are you seeing 
the the holes open how much of it is is your backs knowing the the blockers and the visions that they've got i mean where are you seeing that component yeah it's been a little bit of both you know obviously there, there's been some cleaner creases this spring than there were last fall but the other thing that's really stood out to me is our guys have learned one thing backs don't do a very good job of when they come from high school to college is they don't understand pressing the line of scrimmage you have to press the line of scrimmage and then make your cut and a lot of times guys are trying to make cuts you know, four and five yards from the line of scrimmage. You can't do that. you got to press the line of scrimmage, make one cut, get north-south. And I think that's been the biggest improvement, just the willingness to go hit it downhill right now. Our last question will be from Stephen Brooks with 24-7 Sports. Hey, Will, good to see you. Um, hey, Stephen. Uh, I guess so, sort of just going along those same lines. I mean, did this, does this spring allow you – to sort of did it, allow, I guess, earlier, maybe uh, even in winter, allow you to sort of get back to some basics. I think Mel talked about, you know, when he had mentioned the run game, backs not going where to go, offensive line doing, the, you know, all encompassing sort of stuff. Did you able, were you able to get back to basics sort of a little bit and teach some of those sort of fundamental things? And if so, like what were your points of emphasis after last year? Yeah, you know, good question. Yeah, really and truly, it's just you've been in a position to actually have a teaching progression. Last year, everything was so fast and so sped up that you didn't really have time to progress things out. But again, we're an inside zone team. I mean, if you watch us, you know, we're an inside zone, wide zone team primarily. And there are a certain, there is a certain skill set that you have to have. You have to understand, going back to the last question, if we're running the ball to the G, for example, pressing the G, reading that down lineman and getting their eyes where they need to be. Running backs isn't just running to a hole. It's pressing the line of scrimmage and cutting off blocks. A lot of times space is actually not your friend. And, you know, we always talk about, you know, pressing and hitting it vertical. And I think that's one of the things we've really improved on. And also probably the second thing is pass protection. You know, we've really been able to slow it down and get a lot better. I thought our hands were horrible last year. We didn't play as physical as we needed to, but I think the guys have really bought in to try to improve that aspect. Because again, if you have goal to play at the next level, unless you're a first round pick, you better be able to pass pro at the next level. And that's one thing our guys have really bought into. One other thing really quick, if I could. Uh, yeah, please. I know you guys still have a couple more, obviously, but if you could look towards summer and, and fall, what will you, what do you think, I guess, at this point, will sort of be your message or priority with the running backs as you move toward camp and obviously yeah. next season? Steven, just improve. Just improve, be the best version of you. If you do that, I'll figure it out from there. And that's kind of been the message from the beginning. You know, I want the best version of Ken Walker, whatever that looks like. Same thing with Connor Hayward. Same thing with Jordan Simmons. You know, I want guys to obviously learn the playbook a little bit better, you know. I think we've been pretty sharp this spring, but there's never enough information that you can learn. You know, keep learning, keep learning, keep improving, you know, finding different ways, being in better shape. That was the thing last year with fall camp. We weren't in shape. You know, we were in shape. We were running at home and all that stuff. Like, you know, our guys were definitely training, but now they've had a real offseason, an opportunity to actually come into camp in shape. And I think that'll really make a huge difference in our football team. And I, I guess this will actually be the last thing. I'm not seeing anything else in the queue if you got to go. But uh, I, I, don't, have, I don't have anything to do, man. All right. Um, when, when you have the true training program, um, physically, any of your guys that you noticed major differences from, whether it was weight, speed, agility, I mean, uh, having that benefit this year, how did you see that play out in spring so far? Honestly, everyone. You know, obviously, I didn't have Ken last year, but Ken came in in shape, and Elijah looks like a totally different kid. Jordan was doing a nice job, has been doing a good job. Dono is a much better player than he was a year ago. And Connor, you know, I always make fun of Connor, but Connor is the strongest running back we have. You know, obviously he's the biggest kid, but uh, he does a good job. These guys compete, man. They really do work their tails off. Got a, I've got a good group as far as the work ethic is concerned. All right. Thanks so much, man. Yep. Thank you. Our coach, well, I appreciate you joining us. Um, we have Coach Tucker here coming up shortly, so we'll let you go and um, appreciate your time. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Go green. Thanks, Will.